Well, each week a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week sounding off on the state's first transatlantic nonstop college in just three years and the Colts will be staying close to home for training camp for the next decade. Our insiders are Bose Public Affairs Group Principal Roger Harvey, Scotty's Brewhouse founder Scott Wise, and UND Assistant Professor of Political Science Laura Merrifield Wilson. And welcome one and all to Good the to insiders. Uh, and, uh, Roger, I'll throw it to you on the, the uh, first topic. Uh, breaking uh, late in the week, Eli Lilly and company with some big news, uh, a global uh, restructuring uh, a move uh, expected to save a lot of money and cut a lot of people, about 3,500 positions globally. My understanding, Gary, is this is largely going to be through voluntary uh, early retirement. And Lilly's done this a couple of times um, over the last 20 or so years, and uh, it's been well received um, by, by those employees that are in a position to, re to retire early. And I think in large part it's due to the fact that Lilly has a history of always doing right uh, mm -hmm. by its employees. I, I think the other side of this, though, if you think back to March this year, and I know this was a mm -hmm. big story in your show, is when Lilly announced you know, $850 million in U.S. operation expansions, mm -hmm. and you know, $85 million or so is going to be right here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So you know, under the leadership of Dave Ricks, there, there appears to be a, a focus by him to make sure that we're growing here in the United mm -hmm. States um, and certainly here in central Indiana. So that bodes well for us in the, in the long run. Yeah, you, and, and, you, and you, you mentioned that, that focus, and I think from what I'm hearing is, yeah, there's going to be an increased focus on uh, US, uh, the U.S. pharmaceutical market. Uh, over time, for many, many years, Lilly never laid off anyone. It's a new day today, and, and I think this restructuring announcement uh, can be viewed uh, as an attempt to get the company uh, in the right position to compete uh, going forward. When things happen at Lilly, everyone always reacts sometimes over overreacts. Sure, I would agree with that, and you also need to think about in the last few months, the news coming out of Lilly. I mean, they have several promising um, drugs that are in the pipeline, uh, you know, various uh, clinical stages, you know, in that process, and, and they're tackling some of the toughest chronic diseases, yep. trying to find cures, and yeah. so so over time, I think uh, you know, Lilly is well positioned, mm -hmm. and as we've talked about on the show many times, you know, having Lilly here and having the investment continue to be made here is a very good thing yeah. for central Indiana and Indiana. Well, Eli Lilly and Company, one of the big Indiana companies uh, that has been really been actively involved in trying to land a transcontinental or a transatlantic flight, I should say, a nonstop from Indianapolis, uh, in this case to Paris. It happened. The announcement was made uh, this week that Delta Airlines will uh, begin that nonstop service from Indy to Paris. Well, I talk about a huge win for the Holcomb administration and also a, really a win in terms of partnerships with Delta and be able to offer that. Um, it's great for Indianapolis. It's great for the state. Uh, great to have that direct flight. You mentioned the political and I thought it was interesting because the governor did make that a priority yes. and, and I don't know that a lot in the legislature really agreed with that necessarily but he was able to get uh, to get that money that helped to, to secure the flight. Exactly and with the money obviously it's going to be contentious and, and there were some people that thought this shouldn't be a priority but I think mm -hmm. it's fantastic that we have it and you can just imagine the growth that we're going to see because we have this direct flight now. In our I think that what they're saying that it's 50 million dollars is what the state in terms can, of annualized yeah. impact yeah. That from the airport. So I think yeah. it's great I mean it's good I, I, I told you that every time I'm here, a new flight comes <laughs> around. So, right. so I, I, and I, it was weird how my wife never watches the news, yet I got a forward that, hey, look, there's a direct flight uh, to Paris. To Paris, Paris right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, Imagine that. Right. Interesting yeah. how that works. Yeah. What is it, Roger, your, your, your take from a business standpoint? You know, and I, the, the other piece of it is for so long, people said you can't get, uh, get there from here type thing for Indianapolis, so few nonstops. Now there are 48. Now there's a nonstop uh, to, to Paris. Direct impact on the business community. How about from the optics kind of saying, hey, Indianapolis maybe uh, notches it up uh, a bit in that regard? Oh, that's exactly right. And if you look at, you know, from Indiana's perspective, you know, arguably our largest international event, right, the mm -hmm. Indianapolis uh, 500. Right. And, uh, you know, when you now have this option available nonstop to Indianapolis, and you look at, you know, as we're looking to grow, you know, we have so much foreign investment. You have a, you know, Governor Holcomb and folks on another economic trade Japan mission right now to yeah. Japan. Mm -hmm. And so as we look to grow and bring more businesses here to Indiana, you know, we need more of these announcements, quite honestly. I mean, this is a great first step, but it sure would be nice to have more along those lines. And it does put us on, on the map where people go, okay, we can get to Indianapolis without right. flying to a bunch of different cities. Right. Uh, certainly uh, one sector of the economy growing uh, in a large way in Indianapolis is the technology sector. Sector. This week, a sporting event. Indianapolis is known for hosting big sporting events. The LPGA's Indy Women in Tech 
championship. And I think it's interesting, we had Mayor Ballard on the show just uh, a few minutes ago. He was one of the key drivers in making this happen. But this LPGA event, some of the best golfers in the world here, but the name, the Indy Women in Tech Championship, really spotlights that, that issue. I think it's great. I think, you know, we've, we talk all the time about how Indianapolis is growing as a tech sector, right? We talk about Salesforce and the flights now to San Francisco and all these different things we have. I think it's great to put the highlight on this a specific women in technology. And I think by having the, go the golf tournament and then having it at the Speedway is what a, what a great place mm -hmm. to focus and showcase one of our, our gems in Indiana. Yeah, what does this, uh, Laura, in your view, do uh, so much about uh, mentoring and role models in that, in that uh, arena? This kind of event and focus, again, on women in STEM and tech, what do you think? Oh, it's that? huge. I mean, think about all the little girls, even junior high or high school level girls, that are now considering this as not only a college option, but a career, a pathway. Um, and I, I think you see increasing numbers of young women going into these fields. I think there need to be more. So I'm thrilled that we have this. Very good. Well, education, an issue uh, right up your alley, yeah. uh, uh, Laura, Purdue University. Uh, Mitch Daniels announcing another uh, attempt at, at addressing, attacking that college affordability issue. College of Liberal Arts there, a three-year degree option. Uh, could save, they say, students, in-state students, $9,000. Absolutely, if you consider that four-year degree, you're taking off that final year. I think my only concern is long as they get the college experience, and, and he talks about how they can still do internships, they'll still be able to get all the curriculum in. The fact that you're able to start your career earlier, start in the workforce, you, you get your college and then you get done. And college shouldn't be the end dream, it's just the beginning. Well, I think that's part of the, save. there's 9,000 in savings of not spending, but how much do you are you earning now getting into the, your, your career the faster? Yeah. Earlier, I think yeah. the, the, the catch is, when I was in college, I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. So I needed four plus ish yeah, years right. to figure out what I wanted to do. I think for a three year, you've got to know what your major is going in. And there are kids that do. I think yeah. that there are kids that want know exactly what they want to be. And and I think this is a great. I love that Mitch thinks outside the box. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's a great way to, to run that university. Yeah, and I would just add just real quickly, you know, this fits into the bigger conversation about when it comes to higher education about accessibility and affordability. And Lumina Foundation headquartered right here in Indianapolis mm -hmm. is behind this mission nationally to do creative things just like this. You know, this this isn't back like it was in the old days where you know you went to the brick, traditionally brick right. you know, walled you know, uh, school and you stayed there for four years. And you know, nowadays you've got to have that flexibility because students Students aren't always 18 to 21, and they're different parts of their life. And so, if you have this opportunity to, uh, you know, receive a very high-quality education from a top university in three years for less money in the long run, that's that's going to be very attractive. To I was trying to major in beer bongs, and I did. I didn't. <laughs> that didn't work out. Did, well, actually, it did. It helped me in my career. I, I, perfect. I, got, I was going to say you're, 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 you're at least selling yourself a little short maybe here. You were, maybe you were a double major. <laughs> yeah. Inspiration to all those college <laughs> freshmen watching. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one more before we leave that, Roger. I'll ask you: Is Mitch Daniels kind of assume that mantle as the leader in this whole affordability issue? Not the only school. Lots of schools are doing things in the affordability arena throughout the state of. Indiana and elsewhere, but it just seems like time and time again with the acquisition of the online university as well, a Holy lot of tuition uh, constant. yeah, the f tuition freeze, a lot of initiative. Well, I think you know, if, if you look at, at Mitch Daniels and, and his career, you know, even go back to his days at, at Lilly and, and along the way, certainly as being governor and, and other positions that he's had, is he's always been you know very um, forward thinking and you know not afraid to uh, mix it up and you know we don't have to do things just because it's always been done that way mm -hmm. and and it's it's shown time and time again that it works out pretty well when he does yep. that and so when you look at what he's doing at Purdue not just on this but there's been any number of issues where we've been talking about Purdue on this show and how they're mm -hmm. doing things differently it shows I mean that that's in his DNA mm -hmm. and um, and I think Purdue is seeing the results of that because they've got somebody that's not afraid to take on the tough challenges make make uh, very thoughtful strategic decisions and then reap the benefits. Yep. Uh, also want to talk uh, briefly about a big uh, development project on Mass Ave in downtown Indy, the old Coca-Cola bottling plant. Wisconsin uh, based uh, company is uh, closed on the deal uh, uh, for that $260 million project. It's pretty uh, incredible so and, and, and anybody that has researched the, I mean Downtown, uh, my love for Indianapolis has just grown so much with all these different neighborhoods, whether it's Irvington and Mass Ave and all these different pockets. This is going to be a whole new 
a quarter of a billion dollars dumped into this thing. And if you want to see the quality of projects that Hendricks, Hendricks puts together, go look at 86th and Keystone and look at the uh, Ironworks project where Roos Chris and Yoke and Orange Theory and all these different Cunningham restaurant groups. Finally, we get you to come north and put some restaurants up on the north side. So the new Ironworks Hotel is getting ready to open. It's just, I'm extremely excited about what that's going to offer downtown. Very good. We uh, only have 30 seconds left. Roger, the Colts announced a deal, long-term deal, uh, to take their training camp, which this year is at the complex, but um, uh, take it to uh, Grand Park in Westfield. Tremendous win, uh, not only for the Colts, it puts them in Hamilton County. A lot of season ticket holders there. It's going to be easily accessible from neighboring counties. And a uh, big, big win for the city of Westfield. I mean, you look at Mayor Cook's vision several years ago. Yeah. They have been leaders in youth sports. They were just featured recently on HBO, uh, yep. Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. And now with this announcement having the yep. pro aspect, uh, it's, it's tremendous for Westfield. All right, we'll leave it with that. Roger Harvey, also Scott Wise, and Laura Merrifield Wilson, thank you very much. Congratulations on getting married, thank too. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll be right back after this.